And Richard Dawkins joins me now. Richard Dawkins, thank you very much indeed for agreeing to appear on Piers Morgan Uncensored. Pleasure. I assume you will be uncensored. Of course. You've never been censored, have you? No. <laughs> In fact, people have tried to censor you, and we're going to come to a bit of that later on. This cancel culture has even come to your door. What do you make of, of that? People these days not wanting to hear opinions they don't like. I think it's very sad. I think, especially in, uni in universities, where I spent all my life, universities are places where you should be free to speak your mind, listen, even to something that you don't like. And it's very tragic that universities seem to have bought into the idea that if you don't like what you, what you think you're going to hear from someone, you should shut them up and refuse to let them speak. Yeah, I mean, I find it completely baffling that at a place of education where the whole point is to test your own thought processes and to deliberately be exposed to other thoughts, we're now in a place where a lot of students feel they just don't want to hear it. They only want to hear stuff that validates their own opinion. They use this word safe. They want to feel safe. And a university is the one place where you should not feel safe. Yes, certainly not should be intellectually dangerous. safe. Yes, exactly. In terms of thinking, yes. you know, I just think you want to be constantly challenged and provoked about what you believe and what you think. You want to be physically safe, but but yes. inter intellectually you should be challenged. Well, it's just what's extraordinary to me is they they want to what they call degender and neutralise language, but they're doing it from a completely false pretext that you can somehow pretend biology doesn't exist, particularly when it comes to someone's sex. I mean, it, it's incontrovertible. There's no scientific doubt about this. And yet a small group of people have been quite successful, actually, in reshaping vast swathes of the way society talks and is allowed to talk. It's bullying. Uh, and we've seen the, the way um, J.K. Rowling has been bullied, Kathleen yeah. Stock has been bullied... Um, They've stood up to it, but but um, it's very upsetting the way this tiny minority of people has managed to capture the discourse and to um, really talk arrant nonsense. What's the answer to it? Science. I mean, um, there are two sexes. Um, you can talk about gender if you wish, and that's a subjective... I'm not but when people say there are 100 genders, for uh, example. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in that. As, as a biologist, there are two sexes, mm. uh, and that's all there is to it. You had a humanist award stripped in 2021 because of your comments about this kind of thing. Uh, you had a tweet in April of that year. In 2015, you tweeted, Rachel Dolezal, a white chapter president in America of the NA, NAACP, was vilified for identifying as black. She was white. Some men choose to identify as women, some women choose to identify as men. You'll be vilified if you deny that they are literally are what they identify as. Discuss. And all hell broke loose and you had your award stripped because you were effectively doing what J.K. Rowling and others have said. You were just espousing a biological fact. I wasn't even doing that. I was asking, asking people to discuss. Discuss. Mm. That's what I've done all my life in universities. Right. Do you like social media? No, uh, I don't on the whole. I use, I use them, but I, I, don't, I don't like them. I'm going to come more to this, because I think the whole cancel culture, woke kind of world we live in is, is a fascinatingly disturbing one, and you've got strong views on it. But I want to start, because you're known as one of the world's big thinkers, I want to start with some big theme stuff. And I guess there's no bigger theme than evolution itself. And I think I'd, I'd ask a question like this. What do we know now about where we've come from? And what don't we know? OK. We know once you've got um, a self-replicating entity, which nowadays is DNA, but it wasn't originally, once you've got life started, once natural selection, Darwinian natural selection has got going, then we pretty much understand the four billion year history of what's given rise to us and all other living creatures. We don't know how it started, and that's still a mystery, and it may always be a mystery, because it happened a very long time ago, and uh, we may never know exactly what did happen. We know the kind of thing it had to be. What kind of thing do you think it was? It was the origin of a self-replicating molecule, a molecule that makes copies of itself. DNA is such a molecule, but the original one was almost certainly not DNA, because DNA is a, has been called a high-tech replicator. There had to be a precursor to DNA. Okay, so 
I'm a Catholic. I was raised a Catholic. Um, so I'm a religious person, which I know is anathema to you, and we'll come to that. But my arguments with atheists, historically, have always come down to one thing. And maybe you've got an answer which will persuade me of the folly of my ways, which is this. What was there at the start? We don't know. But I don't know, and you don't know. But, can, but, can, but no human brain, unless you want to correct me, can actually comprehend nothingness, right? No, but it's, a, it's an, a fallacy to think that because I don't understand how it happened, therefore God did it. I mean, that's just weak. Well, no, I'm, I, OK, but I'm prepared to have an open mind about this. Yes. But somebody did. And I just have never met a human brain that can explain to me what happened before, say, you go for the Big Bang argument. Well, what was there before? What, what does nothing look like? Physicists are debating this. I'm not a physicist, but they're debating it. My point is that they don't know, and I don't know, and you don't know, and it doesn't help to postulate a god that did it. But that you're certain it's not a god, and yet you admit you don't know. No, I'm, I'm certain that it doesn't help to postulate something very complicated at the outset, because what we've got is primeval simplicity, and from that stems everything. Mm. And what science does, it starts with simplicity, which is relatively easy to understand, and from that it develops into the whole of the universe and the whole of life. It doesn't help to start with complexity, and a creator has to be complex, whatever but else the, he is. But the reason that I subscribe to the theory that there must be a more powerful being out there than anything the human race has created, is it not possible that you're all wrong on the atheist of side of the argument? We could, we could be all wrong, but... What, and you what might is, get a shocking surprise one day well, when you're you no might. longer with us. You, you might. And you discover we were right all yeah. along. It's possible. <laughs> you can see it's possible. It's highly unlikely. Um, <laughs> there, you don't know, though, do you? No, of course I don't. Um, scientists are, take a pride in admitting when, what they don't know. Mm. And they don't know what happened before the Big Bang. They don't even admit that the, the word before means anything. Mm with respect to the Big Bang. Yes. Physicists will tell you... But it has to. I mean... It just... Well, it doesn't, because that's a naive statement. Um, physicists will say that, that you do not have to say there was a, a... Time began in the Big Bang, is what some physicists will say. Yeah, but to which I immediately respond with my basic human brain. Well, OK, if time began, when did it begin? Well, quite. And what was there before? Quite. Which is a fairly obvious question. It is a very obvious question. It's too obvious, and physicists will tell you that you're being naive. See, what's interesting to me, having spent some time with you, never met you before... You don't seem that, like, provocative or... Bingo, you got it. I'm not. Right. Where does this reputation come from? I don't know, but I see some of the clips from earlier yeah. of you in your more firebrand no, years, I get, perhaps. I get provoked and people, right. people goad me like a, like a, a bullfighter with yes. a red rag. But, but I'm, I'm, you don't actually come over that way. No, I'm a, I'm a very mild... Do you feel you get a bad rap? Yes. But what's the real Richard Dawkins like, then? Well... Um, I, I hope I'm polite and, and um, interested and interesting and, and I like to talk to people and hear what they have to say. Are you just incurably logical? Are you basically yes. like a human sp Spock from Star Trek? I wouldn't like to say that. No, I'm, I'm quite emotional as well. I mean, I, I love poetry and music. Do you, do you fear, given the finality of what you think death to be, do you fear it as you get older? I fear the process of dying, but when you're dead, you don't know anything. It's just like before you were born. I think it was Mark Twain said, I was, I was dead for billions of years before I was born and never suffered the smallest inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when you have loved ones who've died, for example... That's tragic. Yeah, but how, how do, as somebody who believes literally in the finality, the, the rotting of a body and that's it... It must be worse than for somebody like me, where I genuinely believe there's something better to come. It, it's worse, so what? Not so what, just curious. that It must be for you awful each time, far yes. worse than it is for people who have a belief. Yes, it is. A lot of people take great comfort from their belief in God that there is a different life out there. Yes, they do. So you don't what? have that sucker no, at all. No. So is it, is it incredibly painful? More, more for you, perhaps, than somebody no, I don't think who so. is a believer. Let me put it to you this way. If you really did believe it, 
Wouldn't you say to the person on the deathbed, looking forward to seeing you in purgatory? A lot of, well, a lot of people say, looking forward to seeing you in another life, yeah. Yes. A lot of people say you, that. You don't really believe it, though. Actually, I, I do. Yeah, I do, actually. Because I find it... When I think about it in big picture, which is your great thing, I think, how likely is it that we just got put on this planet, Earth, as human beings, as a one-off kind of entity that existed here, and then you die and that's it? And, we, and it only lasted four billion years, and before that was absolutely nothing at all. How likely is that to have been the case? I don't think that's likely. My, my human brain, which is limited, does not think that is likely. I think it's very likely. I think really? It's exactly what happened. What yes. are the other dangers, do you think, facing mankind? Oh, well, um, nationalism, um, national pride... Um, of, of the kind that we saw with the Nazis, where they literally want to take over the world. Yes, and, and um, in a smaller way, we're seeing it with Putin. Mm. Um, obviously, um, climate change is one we have to worry about. Mm. Um, artificial intelligence is perhaps not another one. Um, you yes. said before that Islam, or fundamentalist Islam, is one of the great threats. I think, I think fundamentalist faith where you believe absolutely that you're right without any evidence is a, is a major danger because that licenses you to, to do anything. If you really, really sincerely believe that you're, you've got right on your side because God told you, then really I can sort of understand how the Inquisition mind worked and mm. how the modern Islamist mind But you're being works. accused of being an Islamophobe, are you? Or... Would you be taking the same view of the Christians back in the 16th century? Uh, uh, well, I'm not an Islamophobe. What I am, a, what I am a phobic about is um, clitoridectomy, of throwing gay people off buildings, mm. um, banning dancing and music and f having fun generally. I'm, I'm phobic about all those sorts of things, mm. but that's different from being Islamophobe. M Muslims are the biggest victim of Islamism. Yes, they are. Are you worried about... I mean, do you get threats because of the positions you've taken on some of these things? Yeah. When you saw what happened to Salman Rushdie, yeah. didn't send a shudder through? Yeah. Are you saying, no, you don't want to talk about it? Or... Yes. Right. I mean, that's interesting in itself. Because it's it is a, there are areas which you would prefer not to discuss. Yes. I should have said that before we started. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, I, I'm... I think it's sad that you can't.